Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. Last week NASA conducted their first ever all-female astronaut EVA. But women have it so much harder to making it as an astronaut than males do. In fact, this specific spacewalk was originally supposed to have happened earlier in March this year. It was put on hold due to the lack of available spacesuits for their small size. In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about how things differ for female astronauts in comparison to their male counterparts. EVA stands for Extra Vehicular Activity and it's any activity by an astronaut carried outside of a spacecraft. Essentially, it's a spacewalk. Usually, it's to make repairs on the outside of a spacecraft. Contrary to what President Trump said last week, and This is the first time for a woman outside of the space station. What we saw was the first ever all-female EVA and not the first female <laughs> form an EVA. As of October 2019, out of the 564 people that have been to space, only 65 have been women. That's 12%. However, to date, 14 women and 213 men have carried out spacewalks, which is a much smaller fraction than the number of female astronauts. The first female woman to go to space was the Russian cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya, who went outside the Salyut 7 space station in 1984. The application of females to astronaut programs is not that of the standard. For example, when China initially had their astronaut selection, on top of the standard selection criteria, females additionally had to have been married, since married women were seen to be more physically and psychologically mature. And they also had to have had children because of the concerns that spaceflight could harm their reproductive organs. Russian cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova was the first ever female in space. She flew in 1963, but it wasn't until 20 years later that the first US female, Sally Ride, went to space. Back in the 50s, when considering astronauts, it was believed that women would actually be better astronauts than men. They were lighter, they're smaller, and they require less oxygen. In fact, tests made by Randolph Lovelace, a doctor involved in selecting the first NASA astronauts, even showed that women performed better in rocket simulations. Nevertheless, back then, women were thought to not belong on the front line. There were worries about their menstruation and their fertility in space. And so ultimately, it wasn't until the NASA shuttle era, where there was a need for a more representative astronaut class, that the first woman got to fly. In space, there's a concern that the lack of gravity could cause the blood flow during menstruation to flow inwards instead of out of the body. And this occasionally does happen here on Earth. It's likely the cause for a very painful condition known as endometriosis. There is, however, no evidence that this could happen in space any more than it does on Earth. NASA's concerns were that menstruation could pose health risks for the astronauts or even have negative effects on their performance. However, when Sally Ride first went into space, she was asked if a hundred tampons would be enough for her one-week trip to space. It's just one example of the male ignorance to how the female body works. It may, however, be quite difficult to put a tampon in in low gravity, but thankfully, nowadays, women have access to the pill. Fertility is another concern for female astronauts. Radiation could lead to infertility. However, this would affect both males and females equally. Russian studies showed that when male rodents were placed in simulated zero gravity conditions, they could no longer produce sperm. And another study in 1979 that flew both male and female rats into space showed for some reason they did not mate. This was why Chinese astronauts are required to have had children before they fly, and why NASA offer their astronauts the freezing of their eggs and sperm. 
Most women astronauts have not had children before they fly, and usually they delay their first pregnancy until their space career is over. The average age of astronauts giving birth for the first time is 40, and it's believed possible to conceive in space. There are rumors that there were tests on rodents on Soviet space flights. However, the pressure changes in space are potentially harmful to a developing baby. Both men and women are affected by radiation. However, due to the currently used risk models for certain cancers such as ovarian and breast cancer, women can currently spend only half as much time in space than men can. This limits their career options compared to men. In more recent years, research has shown that women are in fact more susceptible to health risks. However, none of these have anything to do with their abilities to be an astronaut. It's super frustrating. Female astronauts also have it pretty tough on the media front. In 2015, six Russian female astronauts were asked how they could cope without makeup on an eight-day space simulatory. And NASA even developed a space-friendly makeup kit specifically for Sally Ride, because that is super important. Russians, when they're females, they don't tend to be astronauts because it's in their culture, and this is no surprise. Before female astronaut Yelena Sarova went to space, she was inundated with tons of questions asking her how she'll style her hair in space and how her children will cope without her. That's all for this week's video on women in space. I hope you found it as interesting as I did making it as usual. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.